All right, so today's lecture recording is going to be on active record associations because I saw most people uh, struggling quite a bit with this yesterday. So active record associations, this particular challenge is really about a few things. One is it's about data modeling. How are we setting up our tables so they're related to one another? And the other thing that it's focused on is how do we create the models inside of Ruby so that they connect to the database correctly and they talk with each other correctly. That's the most important thing. So we're going to split this into two parts. The first part is going to be we're going to solve Amazon and the second one we're going to install, we're going to do something called uh, uh, Uber Eats. So we'll start off with Amazon. Again, we're not creating any sort of, like, we're not doing anything except for just the associations. So I know that a shop has you know, a name and the products that it sells and, you know, like its location and things of that nature. But we're all, for us, we're just trying to make the test pass. We're just trying to do all of these association methods. So I do four things when I try to do this. One, I create the schema. So I draw it out and I really think through every single association, like what is related to what, what has a foreign key, what has a primary key. Uh, and I really try to draw that out first. That's 90% of the, that's 90% of the issue. Then I create, number two, I create a, um, an active record migration. An active, active record migration is just a script that your computer will read through and actually just create your database with. Then I write all the associations on the models. Then I create the models and then write all the associations for the models and run the test. That's it. So first things first, the one that's going to take the most time is we're going to jump over to uh, <coughs> db.laywagon.com for a SQL designer. So for our very, very basic implementation of Amazon.com, we have a shop, a product, a review, and a user. And these are the different types of associations that we're talking about. So because we know the different models we have, remember a model is a singular version of the table. So when I'm talking about shops at Amazon, I, when I talk about an individual uh, instance of it, it's a one single shop. So let's create the, all these tables. Shops products uh, reviews oops I'm sorry and users now part of this part of your job when you're when you're actually starting to write your own greenfield projects greenfield being like brand new um, is to determine what the associations are for us in this particular challenge, we've actually been given the associations. And you just have to figure out how everything is connected. So a shop and an owner. When I do shop.owner, it should return a user object. So with that in mind, a shop belongs to an owner. Or does an owner belong to a shop? Does a shop have many owners? Does an owner have many shops? The way I'm thinking about it is a owner has many shops and a shop has many owners. So I think with that, if a shop belongs to one particular owner, I'm going to add a field called user ID. And I'm going to connect it from the users up here to the shops right here. Again, when you take a look at this, think about the correlation. Does a shop have many owners? Or does a shop belong to an owner? So it's has many or belongs to, choose one. So a shop has many owners. Nah, a shop belongs to an owner. That makes more sense to me. So with that, I know that it's when I call shop.owner, it should return a user. So I know that the shop belongs to a user. So that's why I have the user ID on the shops. One I, Every single entry for a shop belongs to one singular user. Then a shop and products. Does a shop have many products? Does a shop belong to a product? Makes sense to say a shop has many products. With that, we know that a, a product belongs to a shop. So I'm going to write a product has something called a shop ID. I'm going to connect it from here to the products. A shop has many products, and each individual product that I enter belongs to one particular shop. That makes sense. Next, a shop has many reviews, and these are reviews for the products sold by the shop. So with that, hmm, maybe we'll leave that blank for right now, because a shop has many reviews. Hmm. Well, let's go. Let's jump into the next one. A product. Let's. So we're gonna we're gonna hold off on this. I'll keep this highlighted so we come back to it later. 
a product's relationship with a shop. A product belongs to a shop, like we said, so that's we should be fairly good to go with that. A product has reviews. Does a product belong to a review or does a product have many reviews? It makes sense to say a product has many reviews. So a review, it seems like, belongs to a product. I'm going to connect the foreign key here. So it appears that a shop has many reviews. Uh, I'm sorry, a product has many reviews and a review belongs to a product. If we jump back up to here where this shop.reviews, you can see that even though I have this, I'm not directly correlated with reviews here, but I can get to reviews from shops through this table in the middle called products. So a shop actually has many reviews through this middle joint, this middle table called a product. All right, so finally we have product.reviewers, and this should return the users who have returned, who have reviewed this product. So I think a product has many reviewers. So we have to get from a correlation of product down to reviewers, which is just users. Now a product, since a product has many reviews, each individual review, I believe, has a user ID. So this particular review belongs to one singular product, and a particular review correlates it's exactly with one user, which is also going to be known as a reviewer. All right, uh, so let's see. Continue on. A review belongs to a product. That's my thought process. A review belongs to a product. We have that correlation right here. A review belongs to a user. Same thing right there. A product has many reviewers down here through this table called reviews. So a user has many reviewed products. A user has many reviewed products through reviews. And a user has a shop. A user, yeah, I think that's it, because the shop belongs to a user. So this is my thought process. Step number one, just kind of go through everything. Make sure that you can say, like, one has many of the other, one belongs to the other, uh, and then you can really spend some time with this particular element. This is honestly the most important. So now that we've finished this and we feel pretty comfortable with it, the number two step is we create a migration. So if you jump over here inside of Amazon, this, again, we're starting to build out larger apps. Right now it's still small. We still only have like five folders and five extra files inside of there. But uh, eventually when you get to Rails, there's I think 55 folders and 200 something files that that get automatically generated but we're going to build up slowly so that when you by the time you do get there it's not anything out of the ordinary inside of my gem file here this lists out all the gems that i need so i'm going to i cloned it down i'm going to cd into amazon i'm going to bundle install or you can just type in bundle bundle and bundle install do the same thing so when i hit enter here it goes inside of my gem file reads all these gems and installs them in, in case that they're not already installed. From there, I'm going to run rate db drop and all that kind of stuff. So let's just let's just start running that now. So I'm going to run bundle exec. Bundle exec is a command that you prepend to like rspec or to pr pretty much like to rspec and other things that you may need to run. Uh, and the reason why we do this is um, rspec and rake. The reason we do this is because if you have a version on your machine that's more advanced, like let's say you're working on a, an iPhone 10.0 software, and you have like uh, you have a very updated piece of software, but you need to like you have uh, this is a bad example. Hmm. You're working on software, and you, it relies on a specific gem. You have version 25.0. But the, this software relies on version 20.0. In order for you to actually use use this software correctly, you need to use version 20.0 versus 25.0. So to say that I want to use the specific versions of the gems in your gem file .lock, you have to prepend with bundle exec. Again, bundle exec just means that whenever we run these commands, we're using the versions of all the gems find, found inside of this file here. So I'm going to do bundle exec rake db drop app env equals test. 
Now, when you're developing software, there are different environments that you're going to need. Development environment is the most popular one. It's where you develop all the code. It's a sandbox that only lives on your particular computer. There's also a test environment that when you run RSpec or any sort of testing framework, um, that runs separately of your, of your development environment. So there's a test environment with its own database and its own uh, you know, rules and things like that. There's a development database which has, has a specific, uh, there's a development environment with the development database. There's a staging database most of the time. There's a production database most of the time. So the database that you have on your machine as you're developing stuff for Groupon.com is very different from the production one, which has all the records of all time. So let's just drop the database to begin with. When we drop the database, it just clears everything out. So we drop to Amazon test. <clears throat> I'm going to create. When I create this right here, I'm just creating an empty database called Amazon test. There's nothing inside. The next little bit right here says migrate. And we're not going to run this quite yet because we need to go back over here and figure out what to type inside of here. So again, three or four steps to doing any sort of active record association. One is actually draw everything out just so you're fully aware of what's going on. Two, we're going to translate all of this stuff into actual, uh, actual code here. So I'm going to this, this particular um, migration file has a timestamp, and the timestamps are important because they execute from the least recent up to the most recent. Right now we only have one file, but let's say we had 10 files ranging from 2017 to 2018. The 2017 ones would execute first and then go all the way down to the 2018 ones. And when I look at these particular files, I want to make sure that they're named in a specific way. I want to be able to glance at it and know exactly what I'm talking about. So create models. When I read it, I know I'm just going to be creating models. So I'm going to create, with all this, I'm going to just going to create my initial database. So I'm going to create a table called shops do t. I know I have, I think it was shops, products, reviews, and users. Shops, products, reviews, and users. All right, let's jump back up here. All right, so a shop belongs to a user. Again, all we're writing here is just the, so if there's any sort of like columns we need to put on our table. So a shop belongs to a user. T dot belongs to user. And then for all these, I'll just do T dot timestamps as well. T dot timestamps is a, is active records shorthand for, um, is active records shorthand for created at and updated at. So whenever you create a shop, it keeps track of when you created it, and it also keeps track if you decide to update it later. <clears throat> so that's a user, a pro uh, a shop. I'm sorry. So a product, a product seems to belong to a shop. Fairly simple. We just copy the same thing, throw it up there. T that belongs to shop, and with timestamps. Reviews is a little bit different. Reviews belongs to a product and belongs to a user. That should do it. Belongs to a product, belongs to a user, and then it looks like users don't doesn't really need anything. It doesn't belong to anything. It's, it sits by itself. Right. Sorry about that. All right. So I'm going to I dropped it. So it's. There's no database named Amazon test. I created an empty database called Amazon test. If I migrate here, everything should work. There we go. So maybe we'll go a little bit further. Actually, no, let's not go further yet. Now we're gonna jump into our models. So we did number, step number one, which was create our schema. Step number two, we wrote the migration script. Again, this is reusable code that's going to, uh, that creates our database. And now we have four models. Now, whoever wrote the, the challenge was kind enough to get us started over here. So I'm gonna keep two windows open. So maybe view, uh, layout, rows two. I wanna keep my, my migration file down here. 
just in case I need to look at it. And then I'll shrink everything to make it look a little better. So let's start with shops. So again, this belongs to down here is basically gives you the uh, the user ID on shops. But when it, when we're talking about active record like models inside of the inside of Ruby, uh, we actually have to write all the associations, like all of the associations. So let's take a look. So a shop looks like it has many products. It has many products. Actually, we don't even need to do that. It does everything for us here. A shop has many products and a shop has many reviews. It has many reviews. Now the important thing to know is that shops have many products. That makes sense. There's a direct line between shops and products, this red thing here. There is not a direct line from shops over here to reviews. It does it just doesn't exist. But there's a core I can get to reviews through this table in the middle. So I'm going to do I'm going to declare shops have many products and I'm going to declare shops have many reviews through products. Remember you have to you have to do the direct correlations first before you do the throughs. So a product a shop has many products. A shop has many reviews through products. And it also says that a shop belongs to an owner. Hmm. Now, if you take a look over here, it's under shop. A shop has user ID on there. A shop doesn't have owner ID on there. And that's an co important correlation. Um, so what we'll do is we'll come up here. I like to do my belongs to up, uh, up front. So belongs to owner. But since owner doesn't exist, it actually goes towards the, it's at, we're actually talking about the user class. And the foreign key that we use to connect with it is something called user ID. Again, when I'm trying to say a shop belongs to an owner, an owner doesn't exist inside of my database. As you can see, I only have the, the thing called users. So when I say that a shop belongs to an owner, I'm actually saying, hey, like I know it makes sense. When you do shop.user, it doesn't make any sense. When you say shop.owner, uh, that makes sense. But since there's not an owner table in the database, the class, the database class that I'm talking about is user. And the way I'm going to connect from shop to user is using this foreign key called the user ID, which I've defined on line four. So I've done one of them. Let's jump over to product. A product belongs to a shop. Pretty simple. Belongs to shop. A product has many reviews. Has many reviews. Let's take a look if that's correct. A product has many reviews. Cool. And then now we need to get to the point. Um, a product also has many reviewers, if I'm not mistaken. Mm, product has many reviewers. So a product has many reviewers. Viewers through uh, reviews. Let's see if that works. We'll find out later when this, if and when this breaks. All right. So a pro we did these three. Now we go over to review. A review belongs to a product, and a review belongs to a user. This one's very simple. A product, a review belongs to a user, and it belongs to a product. And finally, a user has many reviewed products and a review uh, a user a user has many reviewed products and a user has a shop. So a user has many reviews, has many reviewed products through reviews source product and has many shops. If this works, I'll be very surprised, but we'll find out. We'll just run bundle exec. And what I've done here is I've aliased BE for bundle exec because bundle like, typing out bundle exec sucks. I'm just going to do BE R spec, which will run all of my tests. Please do not blow it blow up. Okay, so it blows up and it says, there's an unknown attribute reviewer for review. Hmm. So it looks like a reviewer, a review has a reviewer. Okay. Review belongs to a user. 
looks like it belongs to a user and using that same thing that I was talking about belongs to reviewer last name and all this this stuff here run again all right so we have 10 examples and 10 and zero failures so this is how we would do uh, this associations for this first one again number one draw it out really spend some time with this one because after you do this is just translation so I've drawn it out I know what it's supposed to look like my f the first thing that I write is my is my uh, migration which actually creates the tables and the columns then I do all the associations here and that just about does it let's take a quick break and then we'll do the next one